Hi everyone, this video will demonstrate adding products to your catalog. And since this is a getting started video, I'm starting with a completely empty catalog. First I'll take you out to where you manage your products. We'll go to start, catalog, manage products. And this is going to open up the product explorer. There are multiple ways that you can add products to your catalog. Um, you can add them from scratch by clicking the new button here, which will open a new product form and then you can go ahead and fill in all of the relevant fields. You could import a spreadsheet of products, a CSV file, if you happen to have your data uh, in a uh, comma separated value format. Uh, but this video is going to focus on adding from the details library. And uh, if you look up here in the library section of the ribbon, there is an add from button. And if you click that, that will open the add from library interface. In this video, I will focus on downloading products directly from Dtools, but there are a few other options. Um, the extended library up here uh, from a company called Edelize, and then there's also data that you can download from Portal.io. And you can learn uh, about both of those downloads via our online user guide, which you can access by clicking this learn more button here in the upper right hand corner. So what you're seeing here is a list of all of the manufacturers available for download over here on the left hand side. I'll scroll all the way down and uh, your list may look different depending on whether or not you have data subscription with Dtools and that is a service that we offer. It's optional. Um, if you do not have a data subscription, you'll see a list that looks more like this once it filters and it's going to show only the partner products. So these are manufacturers that are partnered with Dtools and those are available for free to all of our users. They do not require data subscription. But if you do have data subscription, you'll see uh, again a quite larger list over here, which will list um, some manufacturers with the red icons, non-partners, as well as the green ones who are partners of uh, Dtools. To download uh, the first product, I'm going to come over here to the manufacturer list and just start searching. And you can see that it will real-time filter. And when you find the manufacturer you're looking for, just click on them. And if they are a partner, the ones with the green icons, what you're going to see is this little partner info page. Um, you can go over to the search results page here, and you'll be able to see all of the data that is available for this particular manufacturer. In this case, 166 products. You're able to view up to 50 records per page here, and uh, that means you can download up to 50 products uh, per page. Now, uh, we do recommend that you go through and select the exact products that you sell rather than download everything from a particular manufacturer, but it will be up to you how you build your catalog. Um, what you'll see here, if you look at an item, uh, you'll see that there's a new button, and that indicates that it's not in your uh, catalog already. It's new to you. You could preview this item out on the Details website if you wanted to see what specifications we have for that item prior to downloading it. And then there's a download button here that you can click to actually download the product. Uh, if you do want to download multiple products at a time, if you hold Shift down and click, you can select a series, or if you hold Control down on your keyboard, you can select outside of that series. What I'm going to do is search for a particular product. So I'm just going to type in uh, you know, partial model number, or you can type in a full model number. And you can see that it filters down to these two speakers here. And uh, to download this top one, I'm just going to click on it and drag it over here to the download section. You can either do that or you can click the downloads button. It's up to you. And your download will show here. This is now a part of my catalog. And what I'll have to do is go uh, verify the data and set pricing. And we'll go take a look at that in a second. But what I'm also going to download here is just a uh, standard product. We'll say, well, let's do a receiver. So I'm going to search for a manufacturer, filter to that manufacturer. We'll go to our search results here. And I'm just going to do, a again, a parcel, partial uh, search here. And when this comes up, I'm going to go ahead and select this product right here and drag it over and download it. So far, I've got a receiver, I've got a speaker. Uh, next, I'm going to download wire. Uh, it is a distinct item in our catalog, and I do want to talk about that. So let me go ahead and just download a wire. So we'll get search for a manufacturer. We'll go ahead. I'll go to the search results tab here, and I'll go ahead and search for in partial model number here, looking for 16.4. It's going to filter to all of the wires. And I'll just go ahead and download this one here at the top. Uh, just drag it over and download it. Now, uh, if you want to start editing your products as you download, you can click these links over here and they will open in your catalog and you're able to edit those. Again, set your pricing and verify the data. What I'm going to do uh, at this point is just close this downloads window. I'll go ahead and close that and then refresh my product explorer and you'll see the three products that I've just downloaded. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. Uh, I'm going to select one, double click it, and that will open this product for edit. And here's some of the information that was downloaded from Dtools. You can see that there's a uh, manufacturer, model, 
category, subcategory. This one even has a part number on it. Um, those a URL, a uh, little thumbnail image for use on reports as well as in Visio. Uh, there's a description. This one came down with two different descriptions, a short and a long description. And of course, you can uh, modify these for your needs. Once the data is downloaded or the products are downloaded to your machine, you can do whatever you want with them. The key thing is the price tab here. And in this case, you can see that there are three levels of pricing showing A, B, and C. Uh, those are managed by your product price types. You can name them whatever you want, uh, or you could show up to 12 levels of pricing if you want to per product. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually uncheck these two on my machine. I'm just going to call this one retail, save that, and now that's what's going to display basically one price per product. Um, and what you're going to do is you set your, your cost, what it costs you, what you sell it for, your unit price. And if you're charging labor per item that we discussed in a previous video, you'll notice that this automatically came down aside to the finish phase and one hour of labor. If you agree with that, great. If you don't, you can go ahead and change your hours here for how long it should take to install this product. And again, that's how labor will be charged if you've chosen that method. Now, once you've set your pricing and verified your hours, uh, that's essentially proposal ready data and you can go ahead and start creating projects and adding this item uh, to those projects. There are quite a few more tabs here, and whether or not you use all of those tabs on every product will be up to you. Uh, for instance, there's an order tab here, and I'm going to discuss this further with the other two items, but here you can pick a preferred vendor, uh, if you have any vendors in your list. Um, you can also choose if you order this product in a different unit than you sell. In this case, um, it's a receiver. It's sold as a single. There's no need to enter anything here. But we will discuss that with this wire and speaker in just a second. But while I'm here, I'm going to show you that there is a specifications tab. Uh, and for a product like this, you can see that there's some information like height, width, depth, and weight. And if you want to fill in other things like amps, volts, watts, and BTU, you certainly can do that. The dimensions here are important for our Visio and AutoCAD interfaces when you're doing an elevation drawing. There's also an IOs tab, and a lot of our products that you download from us will automatically be populated with the inputs and outputs for the device. And th this data here is used uh, also in our Visio and AutoCAD interfaces for schematic drawings. So uh, there's quite a few more tabs here, but again, this is a getting started video. So if you just get to here and get a price here and verify your hours, you do have proposal ready data on this particular product. We'll go ahead and save and close that. And next, I'll go ahead and show you a uh, speaker here. We'll double click this. And uh, once again, you get all of these fields filled in for you. Let's see here. We've got two different descriptions. And you'll notice that this says sold in pair. So uh, this is a product, a speaker that is sold in pairs. Um, you know, some speakers will be sold as singles. Um, what you're going to want to do, uh, if you plan to do drawings in both Visio um, and or AutoCAD in our software, is even if a product is sold in pairs, you're going to want to price it by the single and, and sell these as a single. It's going to work much better in our drawing interface. So uh, go ahead and split the price uh, and the cost. Put your cost and your price for a single item, as well as your install hours on a single item. So if it's a single item, you might take this down to, say, half an hour. And then another important thing, if you're going to use our purchase order system, on this order tab here, besides picking um, a preferred vendor here, um, you can mark that you order this product in a different unit than you sell. So if you click this, um, you can pick your unit order of measure. Here's the two defaults, just each and a pair. Um, if it is each, you don't have to even fill that in. But in this case, we're going to put a pair and we're going to put two here. That way, if you are going to use our purchase order module inside of SI, um, we'll take this into account when you're adding um, speakers to that purchase order and do the math for you so you don't accidentally order uh, four uh, single speakers versus four pairs and vice versa. So uh, the order tab is very useful for speakers. Again, enter speakers as singles if you plan to do drawings. So for now, let's go ahead and save and close that. And I'm also going to open up this wire and talk a little bit about it. So we'll double click this. And I intentionally downloaded uh, bulk wire or wire that comes in a box or on a spool. Um, if I had downloaded something that was pre-terminated like a um, HDMI cable that was a specific length, that would be indicated in the model number and each length would be a unique item in your catalog. But when you're dealing with wire that's coming out of a box um, or bulk wire as we refer to it as uh, in our software, um, it's treated slightly differently. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the settings for that. Um, the primary one being here on the specifications tab for wire, there's a bulk wire option. So you don't see the height, width, depth, and amps, volts, and watts, all of the other fields that we saw in that receiver. When it's marked as a wire and cable, uh, 
category here, as you can see, we change the specifications here. And if it is bulk wire, something that comes out of a box or off of a spool, go ahead and check this box. And what that's going to do is it's going to trigger the software to treat this on a per foot or a per meter basis, depending on your Windows settings. And when you add this a drop of this wire to a project, you're going to be prompted for a wire length. So it's very important that when you price this product here, that you put the cost per foot or meter and, and your selling price per foot or per meter. Uh, the labor hours will also have to be per foot or meter also. And I'm going to go ahead and show just an example here of a, on a per foot basis. You might change this to 0 0.005 hours. And what that would mean um, for this particular wire, for a 100 foot drop inside of a project, that would charge half an hour of labor. Uh, 100 feet, we would move the decimal places two places over, 0.5 hours. So that's a good baseline for you to start with. And you can decide if you want to charge a little bit more or a little bit less than that. Again, based on a, a easy math, 100 foot drop. Of course, you can put drops in of any length uh, once you add this to a project. But that's a good starting point uh, to consider there, the 0 0.005 for your hours. And the other thing you're going to want to do here, uh, if you are going to use the purchase order module, is on the order tab, we're going to go ahead and select this option again to order this product in a different unit than you sell. Uh, now, I don't have a uh, box in my list or spool in my list, so you can always just hit new here, and we'll go ahead and let's call it box. We'll save that. And how many feet are in that box? In my case, feet, we'll say a thousand feet. And that way, again, when you're using our purchase order module, we'll do the math uh, for you uh, for that product. But go ahead and save that for now. Now, obviously, I still haven't set um, my pricing on any of these items, but that's something you're going to want to do is set your pricing and then continue to download um, products from Details here with the Add From Library. Or if there's something you can't find out there, you can always hit this new button and hand enter it or import a uh, spreadsheet of products to get going with the software.